Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's the Rambo with me. I'm Alex. Alex Bennett, and we're here until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. He is now in my time zone, there which, you which go. is weird because all the other people I call are in different time zones, and I'm always used to like writing them and saying, "Well, call me at ten o'clock." You know, right, 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 right. Call right. me at eleven o'clock, whatever. But you're 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 in the same time zone now. I'm now in Eastern Standard Time. Did you have any kind of problem adjusting to the time zone? For a while, a couple of days, a couple of days it was a little rough. But you know, I've been traveling for the last what thirty eight years, thirty five, thirty eight years. So the yeah. plane was virtually empty. Oh, good. I've heard that from people. You yes, know, they get on but, a plane. Yeah. I can't recommend Spirit Airlines to anybody. Talk about cut costs. The chair didn't even recline, so I couldn't even sleep. You know what I mean? I couldn't even lean back in the chair. Are you sure it wasn't just your chair that was bad? Thank you. Thank you. Point that out. Like, I don't have enough issues. Oh, I mean, because I've, I've gotten on planes and the chair won't go back. And it's not me. It's not. It's my chair. It's not all the chairs in the plane. Well, I had a row to myself, so I was able to lift up the armrest and lay down, and so I, I slept for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Spirit yeah. Airlines. With only you on the plane, I would say they're not going to be in business much longer. No, 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 probably not, except, except, you know, to move my stuff in my car cost me over six grand, right? Yeah. And the airplane ticket cost thirty-seven ninety-nine. What? Oh, thirty-seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. I thought you right. three thousand seven hundred ninety-nine. No, 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 no. You know, it used to be. It's not that way anymore. But it used to be when I first moved out to New York. I bought a round-trip ticket, not because I was planning on going back to San Francisco, but because in those days you had to buy a round-trip ticket was cheaper than a one-way right. ticket. Right now, a one-way ticket is cheaper than a round trip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I and then I held on to the other way for a couple of years and used it later on to go back and see people, you know. There you go. But then I had to buy another round trip ticket. <laughs> you know, it was a right. real mess. So uh, I'm watching on Showtime a series on the Comedy Store. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How is it? Uh, I found it very good. Steve Bender did it. Uh -huh. uh, um, uh, Mike Bender. Mike, Mike Bender. Bender or Bender? Mike, Mike Bender. Bender. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 the first episode was about the beginnings of it and the early days. Leno, Letterman, you know, right. and, and, and so on. And uh, they said that the biggest person there at the time really was, uh, J. J., uh, was um, you know, J.J. Walker. Oh, um, yeah. Um, wasn't the first, he was the first one to get the series? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know how I my life intersected with him. No. Um, what <laughs> was um, I worked at WMCA in New York? Okay. And we had, of course, uh, uh, board operators, engineers. We called right, them at sure. the time, and he was one of them. And he oh, was my right? engineer for my Saturday night shows. Yeah. And he kept saying to me, "Hey, I'm down at the, I'm doing my, I'm doing a set down at the, the you know, the comic strip or whatever was the club that was a big club right. at the time." And will you come down? And I never wanted to go down because I was afraid he was going to be so bad that when he would ask me how did I do, you know, I, right, it would right. be awkward. So I never went. Right. Right. And all right. of a sudden, he becomes this sensation. Sure. And, and last night in this documentary on the Comedy Store, they said that. He really opened the door for a lot of people. I mean, he was using Leno and Letterman as his writers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's what Jimmy was doing back then. And he, he, he became huge. Yes. 
So, uh, dynamite, right? Wasn't yeah. he the dynamite guy? Yeah, but there's never any. Uh, um, there was never any explanation of what the hell happened to his career. I yeah. think he got locked into the dynamite guy and yeah. he couldn't get out of it. Because he, he, you know, his act was pretty funny. He was yeah. not an unfunny comic. And um, but they had him on this documentary, and then they talked about uh, the the next one is going to have Kinnison in it and so on, you know. But this right. was the very beginnings, and um, I thought of you because you were down there. You know, sure. you worked the comedy store. You worked with Mitzi. Oh, Mitzi was like my adopted mother. Yeah. Mitzi took good care of me. Mitzi, Mitzi paid for a lot of rehabs for me. Now, let's talk about Mitzi Shore for a second. She ran the comedy store. If the she name sounds genius. familiar, she's Pauly Shore's mother. Right. That's right, the only. Right, right. Th that's the one thing we'll hold against her. Okay. Well, anyway, Pauly's a nice. I kid. know Pauly. Listen, I, 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 people always used to kid Pauly. And I would always defend him because right, when right. I met him, nicest huh? guy in the world. Yes. Yes. You know, nice kid. Really nice kid. Uh, nice. But he, um, um, but his act didn't hit me right. You know, it was kind of, eh, whatever. But uh, she, uh, she ran. She had the comedy store. She owned it. In fact, it talked about the fact that she, she had her husband. Uh, Sammy. Uh, Sammy Shore. Right. Who was a stand-up comic. That's right. And she got the, the comedy store, I believe, in the divorce. Well, here's, here's what they said. She said, I don't want any money. Just give me the club. Right, 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 right. And right. so she didn't take any money. She took the club. Right. And he went, go ahead. This thing's a loser. Right, right, right. And then it took off. And she turned it into a success. Oh, yeah. You know. You know, and she didn't have like, not like the improv has improvs all over the country. The comedy store was in Hollywood, period. Yeah. For well, a while, we had a, a room in, in at the Dunes in Vegas. Mm hmm. I did 18 to wait. Me and Sam, we did 18 shows at the Dunes and sold out all of them. We did five shows on Saturday night. Yeah. Let's just say by the time the fifth show, I was probably not really coherent. Probably. Yeah. And I believe I repeated the same joke three times in the same set. Really? Yeah. And I couldn't figure out why it didn't get a laugh because it was a really good joke. You know, that was good for your sobriety, hanging out with Sam. Well, uh. well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we had different tastes in, 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 um, in drugs. In drugs. What was his taste in drugs? He liked cocaine. Yeah. So he was basically just coke. Right. Yeah. I mean, he tried, he tried, uh, here's a story. He came over to my apartment one time and he said, I know what you're doing and I want you to, you know, hit me up and, and see how good it is. And I hit him up with a shot that was just about an OD shot and it scared the hell out of him and he never asked again. Yeah. Well, that means you, that you, you were into heroin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I was, op as I said, what's it now? And, not an opiate addict, an op what, what, what's the term they use now? Opie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, opie. You were opie. Yeah, that's right. Uh, here's a question, though, and, and please, if it's going to be a bad thing to have, for you to have to deal with when you answer it, just tell me to go fuck myself, okay? All right, I'll do that anyway. I've never done heroin, and the reason right. I never did heroin is I knew I would probably like it. Because I had heard from everybody that ever did it that it was not a drug you hate. Right, 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 you right. Know? Right. And that you could very easily get addicted to. Now, let me also say that the truth about heroin is is that you don't take one shot and then get addicted to it. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, you have to really dedicate yourself yeah, to get it addicted. It takes about, they say, about six weeks of abuse to get yes. to get a habit. Okay. Right, right, right. That's not any message for any of you out there to go out and say, I think I'll suddenly right. try heroin for a week. Right. Okay. Now, All right. you know, that I, I would get re-addicted in three days. Well, because you were already, you know, Yes. And it. I told you the hospitals turned me on to morphine when I was in high school. Oh, really? And that's where my habit began. You, you, you got morphine for what? I broke my jaw in five places. Oh well, that's it. That, uh, that would do it. And, and, so, and the bone actually went through the cheek. Mm -hmm. So they went. It went it, morphine. Right. Oh yes. Okay. Morphine. Uh, and so, 
after you no longer were taking the morphine, did that suddenly make you want heroin or was it several well, years? It, it, I didn't want to get sick or anything, but you know, at, at that point I was still a teenager, so I was able to get through it. And, 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 uh, and then I got really involved in my education for the next seven years. So I didn't do any, it wasn't until I went back to San Francisco. When I got to San Francisco, it, I reintroduced myself to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so my question is, because I've never done it, is what is it about it that is so uh, so seductive? Well, have you ever taken painkillers? Yes. Have you gotten a buzz off them? Yep. There you go. Okay. There you go. You nod out a little bit. You have these opiate dreams. Everything's fine. You know, yeah. you're good. In fact, the Surgeon General came out once and said she'd rather have kids do heroin than crack because heroin once they get their fix they don't bother anybody they take a nap over in the corner and crackheads they take a hit and then they go out and kill their grandmother for more money well i mean of all the drugs you know i mean they they kept talking about uh, uh, there was a book i read once called the heroin myth and what it did is it was a book about all the myths about heroin you know the thing that you one shot and you're addicted for life you know and right. things like that and uh, it basically said that of all the drugs that you could do, it, it was- It does the least harm to your internals. It, yes, and the reason being that it is, and here's the problem with heroin, okay, is that you, uh, you your body produces a heroin-like substance. It's That's called, right, it's your called, body produces opiates. Endorphins, it's called. Right, called. right, 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 right. And, and so what happens with heroin is when you take heroin, your body turns off your endorphin-producing system because it says, right. I'm getting that already. Right, right, right. But then when you stop the heroin, it right. doesn't start producing the endorphins immediately, and it takes no. about a year to start producing endorphins again. The and first that, year is rough, Alex. And the that, first year is rough. Exactly, until your body starts producing its own endorphins. Right. And now your body is, so, you know. Right. I mean, I've been clean for over 15 years. Wow. That, congratulations. And that's a chunk of time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you still jones for it ever? No, no, no. Good. I was lucky. When I, when I came into the rooms, I was ready. I mean, I, I didn't go to a rehab or anything. I kicked cold turkey in, in Narcotics Anonymous. Really? Yep. And that's I had amazing. a big habit. You had, you, I remember you were... We were worried about you. Yeah. You know. The nurse told me, they very subtly, the nurse told me they were picking out black clothing. Really? Yeah. That was their <laughs> way of saying, you're going to die. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Oh, jeez. Well, you have know. You, have you spoken to Debbie at all? I'm, Debbie I'm, I'm speaking to Debbie on Thursday for her to do a thing on this show to tell us how, uh, how Will oh, is Will's doing. Going. Yeah, it seems to be going pretty slow, you know. He uh, had a major. He had a major stroke. Yeah, but and but part of the problem is too that this stroke happened uh, just prior to the uh, not well last October. So right. then uh, then comes COVID and right. everything shuts down. Therapy, all of that, you know. Right, right, and he's right. just lying in the hospital, you know, trying to. He, he's been. He's been yeah, yeah, it's a, just about a year that he's been in, either in a hospital or a uh, rehab. I think yeah. he's in a rehab now, isn't he's, he? He's in rehab, and it, it seems to be going slow. She says we got a, we got a, a hand moving, and his right. leg is starting to move slightly, you know, right. and you're going, it's been a, and it's been a year. I didn't oh, yeah. realize it. It's been a year. Right. And, um, you know, I miss him. He used to do this show every couple of weeks, you know, and... Nicest guy on the planet. Come come to Our New York and we hang out. Oh, lo lovely. He and Debbie. I mean, just yeah. just great people, you know. They're the patriarchs and matriarchs of the comedy uh, scene in San Francisco. They're yes, it. yes, yeah. You know? So, uh, you know, when I heard that happen to him, what happened was how I found out about it was... Uh, we were supposed to do a call together on Skype, and so he would. I would call him on Skype, and he wasn't answering, wasn't answering, wasn't answering. So I called his phone to say, right. "Where are you?" And uh, guess what? Debbie answers the phone and right. says, uh, "It tells you what's going on." Will had a stroke, 
And right. I went, she's almighty. You know, just, I, I didn't know what to say. Right. You know? What can you say? What can you say? You can't say anything. Yeah. I was so devastated to hear it. You and know? She's, she's very optimistic. I mean, she's... Oh, she's in there working her ass off for, for him. Yeah, no kidding. You know, um, they've been a, they've been a couple as long as we've known them. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's I a mean, long they've been a couple time. since at least at least eighty one when I met them in San Francisco. They were already a couple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time again. My, how time flies really? when you're when you're talking about uh, heroin. <laughs> uh, it should move by. It should move by more slowly, but it doesn't. Right, right, uh, right, right. Hey, let's do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Yeah, you got a deal, my friend. All right, talk to you Thanks later. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, folks. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we go again, folks. This uh, whole thing we do here, which is, uh, I don't know, I, you know, I, sometimes I wonder, uh, is anybody really listening? You know, if there was a tree in the forest and there was nobody there to hear it, would there be a sound? And the answer to that is probably not. And if there was a show on the Internet, a podcast, and nobody listened to it, would there be a show? I don't think so. <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, it is time for us. Let me turn on my fan up there so I get a little air in here so I don't get uh, super drowsy or anything. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the only person that's waiting on our Zoom panel. Uh, and uh, there he is. And uh, hello to Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charles. Oh, here comes Brian Neary, too. Uh, yeah, how's it? Uh, I always ask you this every night. How's it going in Texas? It's getting worse. <laughs> it ain't getting any better. It actually, um, uh, uh, a good example. What What is that white that bar at the bottom of your screen, Brian? I have no idea. I was having a hard time getting on already. Uh, oh, really? There it, goes. there it goes. What was that? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, so I, in Texas, it uh, the what the death rate's gone up. Is that uh, what's happening? Yeah, in fact, we're getting ready. We're almost caught up with California. So pretty soon, we're going to be the number one state for COVID cases, in, including and in beating New York out. I guess. I think well, we're already beating, we got twice as many cases as New York's had. Wow. wow. <laughs> so we long as it's passed in cases. It's just we're getting ready. To, you're the only ones ahead of us in, in deaths. Yeah, did you hear that slime bag, uh, Robert, uh, tonight, uh, Trump, uh, with his little thing about New York is like, uh, can't, you know, the, the capital of the country. But it really isn't anymore. It is in deaths. But we got hit with it before anybody else, and we didn't yeah. know how to take care of it or anything else. We had, to, we had to test it out on our population, and that made it a little easier for the rest of the country, you know? Uh but, uh, geez. And then you got the, you know, the one mailbox deal. Yeah. Yeah. In all of Harris County, I used to live in Houston. Harris County is so big that the airport, which is it, is it in Harris County, the airport? It was Sam Houston, uh, and now it's George Bush Airport, right? Uh, Houston. You used yeah, to. George Bush is the international airport that's north of Houston. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it might be actually outside of Harris County. Really outside of Harris County because you have to drive 75 miles to get to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like they won't let you vote and they won't let you get out. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, with that one box, there are people that probably have a 100-mile round trip to get to that one box. Well, there was somebody that said they drove 35 miles to get to yeah. the box. And then they had to wait there for a while because everybody yeah. had to be checked. You had to check their IDs. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, it, you know, they really are, you know, talk about voter suppression. I mean. But they may have screwed up now because the, the, we're, they're blowing all the records out of the water as far as uh, voter turnout. We've had something like, what did I, what did I hear, 40,000? 
votes, uh, 40 million votes so far, something like that. I don't know, some amazing amount of voting. Yeah. We've, had, we've had a million, we've had 2 million votes in Texas in two days. Oh, wow. Wow. And I would uh, venture to say that a good deal of those are um, Democrats. People yes, voting. Yes, especially got to vo wait in line three hours. Yeah, voting against Trump because um, I don't know that the Republicans are that gung ho, you know? Yeah. They don't want to wait in lines, you know? They, they, want, the, they want to go to the head of the line. Uh, but anybody see the debate? T not the debate. The uh, rebate. The <laughs> rebate. <laughs> masturbate. The masturbate. The masturbate. Good one. Good one, Robert. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, not me. Yeah. No, I watched the part. You know, frankly, Alex. Yeah. I, I was I was disappointed for you as president of Antifa. Mm -hmm. I feel strongly that you should have been given a town hall of your very own. That's correct. I'm just saying. Yeah. Does he even know I'm the head of Antifa? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But does he even know what Antifa <laughs> is? <laughs> Probably not. No. You know, I mean, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't know. What did he say? He didn't know what uh, QAnon was. Right. He didn't, he didn't know what QAnon was. Now, I find that a little hard to, mm -hmm. to, to grok in my head, because the old term. <laughs> Uh, to grok in my head because uh, uh, he knows what uh, Antifa is, and it doesn't exist. Right. But <laughs> he doesn't know what QAnon is, which exists. It really right. exists. Uh, you know, where does this guy, does this guy pay attention to the news? QAnon are those things you put in your ear, right, with the cotton Yeah, on them. right, right. And then he said, the part I liked was, he says, well, you know, anybody that's against molesting children can't be all bad. Huh? Yeah. Well, it all easy. depends on how they're defending it, yeah. you know, and what they're saying about it. And Fauci became a Democrat tonight. Did he really? What? Yes. Wow. He, he actually said that Fauci's a Democrat. Oh, said that? Trump said that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah. I must have been out getting water or something. My favorite was 85% of people that get coronavirus wore masks. I, I got a better statistic for him. 100% <laughs> of people who get coronavirus once drank water. So yeah. it stands to reason. reason. Yeah. 80, well, he said 80% of, of people who wear masks get coronavirus. Get coronavirus, that 85%. Would, that would mean that 80% of a, a huge portion of this country has coronavirus right yeah. now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, so his numbers are full of shit. Yeah, 100% of people that are at the Rose Garden that day, yeah. they didn't have masks. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, this whole idea that to I'm say... I'm trying that, to make sense of him. <laughs> Do, ma do masks cause uh, uh, coronavirus? In Trump land. You know, he's a loser that's flailing away. He has nothing else, so he's just throwing shit at the wall like happened last night and mm -hmm. hoping something stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, let me try this. Let me throw that out there. Let me put this. At, you know, there's no coherent strategy. Yeah, but, but. Uh, did you notice as you watched it, the women in back of him? Did you notice that at all? It no. was like, that's all I could watch. Mm. There was this black woman in the back and another black woman in the front and then a white woman kind of center right in back of him. And they're all, when he's saying stuff, going... <sighs> I hope they got six figures paid. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were like nodding all the time, like, oh, yeah. He, and I'm thinking, did he get them placed there so they would look uh, like somebody was agreeing with him? A lot of actors out of work, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you see the same black guy there? Was that same black guy there? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't see him there, but I saw one guy who pumped his fist when they said, people who want you out of office. <laughs> yeah. you know. Now my question is, how bad was Savannah Guthrie? She was pretty shitty. She was bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
that was just a really bad job. She was so, I think maybe she was, she didn't get picked to do the, you know, the actual debates. So she was probably trying to make up for that and thinking, oh, well, I'll ask all the hard questions. And, you know, Trump is not going to answer a question he doesn't want to answer. Okay? That's why I don't usually interview politicians, for exactly that reason. I always dreaded when it was political season, and they said, oh, do you want so-and-so on? I, oh, my God. You know, I bring them on. And I can throw all the hardball questions at a politician I want to, and he spent years working on the ability to evade them. Sure. Okay? And to not answer them. And, what, and the one that always drive, drove, used to drive me crazy is you would ask them a question, direct question, like, um, uh, do you believe that, um, will you accept the results of the election? That's a yes or no answer, isn't it? Yep. Well, not with him and not with politicians. What they do is they will say, well, is it? Well, blah, blah, blah. And then they will take you off the subject and they will go into about a five minute tirade on something that is on their agenda. And it, you get, get back to you. You've almost forgotten what the question was. You know, uh, politicians and beauty pageant contestants. Oh, well, they. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want world peace. I'm in favor of world peace. You yeah. I'm in favor of world peace. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. And how big is your vagina? Anyway, you know, uh, I always, you know, I always, uh, I always hated those, um, uh, those beauty pageants for a number of reasons, not the least of which was I was out there before any of these women were saying, these things are just treating women like they're meat. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, it, 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 it um, so it always, it always bothered me. But as long as they were going to do it, why do they have a swimsuit uh, competition why don't they just have them come out naked you know who has the best pussy you win you're miss america you know my mother's sleeping she would have got mad at you for that <laughs> what she liked the miss america pageant she watches that bullshit. Oh, she i used to call him for the talent show for her dial the number i'm telling you the talent show american idol shit i used to have to dial it in hurry up we gotta count our votes oh come on man <laughs> Oh, really? Wife watches those, and she always says, which one do you like? Which one do you like? And I don't fall into that trap. Yeah. I don't fall in that trap. No. No. Are there any do I look bad in East Jeans? Another question <laughs> exactly. you never answer, uh, right? Uh, are there right. Any, no, sir. I don't think there's a husband alive who hasn't found his wife to have a lapse of taste. And when she does, you wonder, why did I marry her? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> What, she likes American Idol and she wants to vote? You know. But I have to admit, we watch America's Got Talent. But mm. more than that, we watch Britain's Got Talent. That's the good one, you know. Anyway, so, mm. so, we had, so then you also had uh, a Biden, uh, and we went over to him occasionally just to see mm -hmm. when the commercials were on, on NBC. Now, what, what kind of thing like that do you put commercials on? But they did. Yeah. They did. And um, otherwise, I think Trump would have had to pay for the hour, uh, which actually he should have done and then said, I don't want you to run any commercials. That's why I'm paying you, you know. But anyway, I went over to Biden and then I went back to Trump because let's face it, Trump's more entertaining. I mean, am I wrong about this? I mean, no, I don't want him as president. I don't like him. He's a horrible human being. Uh, he's he's the worst there ever was, blah, 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 blah. Still, when it's between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, Biden's very, you know, I look at Biden and I go, yeah, he's very presidential. I'll vote for him. Now back to Trump to get a laugh and to yell at my TV set. It's yeah, and you want to see, I mean, I think everybody's watching Trump to see a meltdown. Yeah, it's a train wreck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still waiting for him exactly. to say. Uh, uh, Robert, <laughs> what what for you was the one moment that just drove you crazy tonight? Anything that he did? I, I, for me, it was that whole thing about COVID, and you know. Oh, the mask was bewildering again with him. Yeah, yeah. that whole like he was always trying to rationalize, like you don't really need to wear the mask. 
Well, somebody should tell him, listen, oh, the question of wearing a mask, you should just say, I think everybody should wear a mask because it's not a political issue. <laughs> you know, just get that out of the way. And if you say, hey, I think it's good if people wear masks, I don't wear them when I'm in public because I'm far enough away from people and so on. And I want to look good when I'm giving a speech and have people see my expressions and you could excuse it that way. But no, he refuses to buy into the mask. Yeah, he does. Either, do you think he's... I was going to ask you this, Alice. Do you think he's trying to act it to us, like sell it, and we'll buy it? I don't, like know, what he's, I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, you know, in the past, I think he believes his instincts uh, suited him well. Okay. Uh, his instincts uh, uh, worked uh, about how to ha how to get people to vote for you and so on. And he's so eaten up by that, he still thinks that he still has that same ability. But he okay. doesn't. You know, he had it once because he mm -hmm. had it once. At, you know, there's an old saying that I always loved. It said, you can fool some of the people some of the time. But not all of the people all of the time. But if you can do it just once, you get elected. <laughs> so he's trying it. You know, and, and, you, know and, you made a good point, Alex. I yeah. mean, me and my mom are watching it. And I'm going to say the African-American lady in the back, was she, you're right. Was she placed there always? Did like, you see her? Did she you was, see? She was shaking her head like, yeah, he's right. He's, yeah. I'm like, look at this shit. My but, mother well, there was like, also another one on the other side of her. Is that thinking of vote? Yeah, and the other one, what was she doing? I, I was really not noticing that one. I was noticing the one right behind them. She was doing the same thing. And then, yeah. then they had a guy in the middle, and they went to a commercial break, and when they came back, the guy was gone and replaced by another woman who was bobbing her head up and down. Did that, now, I'm wondering what you said. Was, he, was she placed there? Was I think so, place? yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I said, look, everything he's but, saying. But was, in a way, like, it was kind of, oh, the bad part about it was it was distracting. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. She had the match going, yep, yep. I was like, could she keep waving her hand anymore? It's like, it was almost like she was his puppet. Like, it was like unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a little disconcerting, I thought. I didn't think she should have been. Actually, I didn't like the idea we saw people behind him. Yeah, well, I wouldn't yeah. that nobody behind him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, did, uh, how many more days do we have till the election? 19. 19? Oh, oh, I can't wait. To listen to yeah, the ni longest 19 days of my I'm life. I'm excited for it, though. Yeah, but it's not going to be over that night. Alex, I'm mm. worried he's going to win. I can't see how he's going to win. I can't see it. <clears throat> Robert, if does he, he have any? You're shocked. the odds maker on stuff. Does he have any chance of winning this? Of course. He's got a he's got a puncher's chance. 13% via Nate Silver is a puncher's chance. There's a chance that he wins by a small margin in key states. There's a chance. But if you're looking to place money as a wager, you'd be a fool to bet on Trump right now. Yeah. A fool. However, if he, if he won, you'd get a lot of money. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the small, yeah, you put 10 bucks, you get a nice Yeah. He needs an October surprise or, or basically Biden to drop dead. Anyway. Well, it's already the 15th of October. And the only surprise we had is he got COVID, which I'm beginning mm -hmm. to go along with Charlie. What's that? I'm beginning to question whether he had COVID. Because he couldn't answer that question. What was the last time he no, got no, that? He, 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 he started know. talking about it. And he said, well, I had a small temperature. I'm uh, Brian, What's you, you know about this a bit. Do you get a small temperature when you've got COVID? I would say yes. I mean, that's why we're checking temperatures everywhere, you but, know. But a small. I mean, what's small? What's a small temperature? Though? He said I had a slight temperature rise. And she so they sent freezing. them. So they sent them to uh, Walter, Walter Reed, Reed. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but with his weight and everything else, he could have a high temperature all the time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, but a, 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 a slow temperature is like 100. Yeah. And he kept saying he had a little bit of the virus. He had a little bit of the virus. Either you have it or you don't. There's measurements that we take for viral load, but that's not by seen yeah. by people. That's just and now how much a thing came you have it. A thing came out from the World Health Organization today that remdesivir doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't? What a shock! The, the, yeah, the remdesivir doesn't work. Um, yeah, and Alex, I think you were right. Johnson and Johnson is the one I said 
but Lilly, I think Lilly is the second company now that is pulling out of the vaccine exactly. because they're having problems. So that's Ooh. two companies, two big companies in the last this last week. Well, I out. think one of the reasons they're pulling out uh, or or stopping testing for a while until they see what the what what's going on is because that would go on almost any time. But this time we're paying too much attention to it, and they're being yeah. urged to rush things along. I agree. I agree. You know, and so therefore, there's a different kind of impetus behind yeah. uh, that sort of thing. But I mean, it's I, also very expensive to do that uh, testing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. the but company has I to, didn't watch it. Has to I send somebody it. out there, mm -hmm. take all, uh, make sure the. Now, did anybody right besides me watch Biden? Drugs are delivered. Yeah. No, I didn't go over to it. I was, yeah, you did. did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I I think if you if there were ratings tonight, uh, the ratings for Trump I think will be higher than the ones for Biden, and I I don't think Bi and Biden maybe in the second hour because Biden had two hours, Trump only had one, uh, and and by the way a lot of people are very mad at NBC that they scheduled him opposite Biden. Yeah. That they didn't say no, you can't do that. You got to do it like Tuesday night, and he'll do it Wednesday night, okay, or Thursday night. Uh, but not do it on the same night. And, they, and a lot of people just go, "Screw you, NBC." I mean, th 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 this shouldn't be a competition for who's going to get the most eyes. It should be just the individual people doing their thing. And uh, by putting it opposite him. They created a, co a television competition, you know. And you know, tomorrow, if 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 uh, Trump got Trump. the higher ratings, which I'm sure he probably did, um, uh, he's going to be on everywhere going. I got the highest ratings. This isn't the fucking Apprentice, okay? Yeah. You know. That's same, same <laughs> thing on Facebook. These guys are posting and saying. Look how many followers Trump has. It's like 35 million, if it, that number's correct. I checked Biden's. He has 3.5 million. And they're saying, oh, there's no way he's going to lose. Look at all the followers. And I said, Facebook isn't, isn't the electoral college. <laughs> it's not no. how you, we don't pick the president through Facebook. Well, you, yeah, heard, I, you, heard, you heard the latest thing about Facebook and, uh, and oh, here comes Patrick. Uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. And, and Twitter. Yeah. Uh, we're stopping these uh, people like the New York Post from putting up this thing about Biden's son, which they say may be a planted story. Okay. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm dandy. Yeah, dandy. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I don't know if you're all familiar with the story, but there's a story that the New York Post printed up that came from Rudy Giuliani about... Uh, what was it? Uh, Hunter Biden's um, laptop. Uh -huh. And yeah. there was some stuff on his laptop, including him with a crack pipe. <laughs> okay. oh, sleeping. Yeah. Sleeping with a crack pipe, which could have been Photoshop. Um, and everybody says, this isn't for real. You know, and it's claiming that Hunter had uh, memos from uh, the guy at Burisma saying, I'd like to meet your father, you know. Uh, and I just, I, they, they, they decided that they were not going to print it, that they were, Facebook and Twitter are very careful now because they don't want any kind of uh, hacking by the Russians or, you know, false uh, news going out there. So they, they uh, did, a, you know, made sure those didn't go out there. And so now they're saying, well, now they're censoring the New York Post. Well, the New York Post is, a, you know, who owns it? Murdoch. You know, uh, and it's uh, it's a uh, it's I don't know. Um, Ted Cruz Ted Cruz did a video saying they want him, they want to they want both of them you know Facebook and Twitter to answer these questions why they didn't post that and uh, you know I don't know uh, and Patrick you might agree or disagree with me on this but you know these are private companies and they can do whatever they goddamn please you'd agree with me on that right Patrick I, I figured you absolutely you're political. And, yeah. yeah. So who are you to say, oh, we're we're going to hold a, a federal investigation into, you know, why they, of course, they can censor anything they want to that doesn't meet up to their standards. 
okay? I can't do things here on YouTube, uh, a lot of things on YouTube, and they, if I did them, uh, YouTube would probably say, mm, you're not, that's not going on tonight, you know? Mm. And they have every right to. They own the store. Uh, I don't have to agree with it, and we can all hate them for it, and we can all say I'm never going to look at Facebook again, or I'm going to boycott Twitter, but who's to tell them what they can allow and not allow? Because they got heat the last time when the Russians were posting stuff on Facebook and Twitter, and so they're ultra-sensitive to it now. Let, let them shut down Twitter for a month. What, what's Trump going to do? Yeah, well, you know, they've, they've actually uh, taken off Trump stuff. Uh, it, was stuff oh, really? it was stuff about COVID, and they said it was truly, uh, it was totally untrue and misleading, and uh, they wouldn't allow that with anybody who was posting on, on uh, Twitter. To they kicked me off just because I called, uh, what's her face, a fat Russian hoe, which she is. <laughs> which one? Well, who's that? That fat bullshit bitch that's running around with uh trump jr oh oh right. what's her name yeah but yeah she just publishes you know russian disinformation you know yeah uh I and can't... that kicked me off i can't get back on i can't remember her name why is she so damn hot Ooh, a file or something like why that. is she Ooh. so damn hot i Go hate when it. that happens i hate it cool i don't think she's hot i think she's like a big fat ass well i w would you throw her out of bed Probably not. Well, yeah, okay, that's, that's the standard. Not anything, but that's, the standard. <laughs> that's altogether different. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did, they ask, <laughs> did they ask you for a reason or any proof of that, or are they just cut you off? <laughs> yeah, no, they they would. I I I protested it, and they just ignored me. I didn't hear anything back. So you can't go back on Twitter? <laughs> no. No, I, I can't. I I tried to log back on. I I I actually even tried to. Uh, create a different name account and they wouldn't let me do that either Were somehow you, they know who you would create a different name i hardly yeah. think so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she used Robert. The real name. <laughs> i don't know did you watch uh, any of the uh, election stuff tonight either uh, patrick either uh, biden or or trump no okay. no i i recorded it i'll i'll catch it tomorrow yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously the most entertaining one was Trump, you know. Uh, Biden's Biden's not in, you know, he's not a TV personality, you know. He, he's okay. He's like somebody said on Twitter. Uh, I, I I saw that it said uh, it was like Mr. Rogers versus the crazy uncle in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did they say? Somebody said the last debate looked like just two old men fighting with each other. Yeah, you know, I, I I what I would have loved to have done is make up a, a Trump puppet and a Biden puppet and put them in a balcony like in the Muppet Show. <laughs> you know, uh, I thought it would have been cool if all the advertisements for both town halls would have been geared to people like 80 years old, you know, like hemorrhoid cream, memory medicines, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, you know, when you watch the uh, the uh, 630 news. Nothing but stuff about doctor stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very, very few ads that don't have to do with um, medical stuff. And now, almost every ad is for, you know, it's the end of the year, so it's for, you know, insurance. Uh, and uh, this is where you get your insurance. Here's how you get it, and, you know, so on and so forth. I, I broke my doctor's balls one time. I came in with a sheet of paper about yay long and said, I'm here to ask if Prevagen, Gilardi, you know, da 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 is right for me. And after about six names, he was about to throw me out on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> ask your doctor if Prevagen is right for you. Yeah, yeah. they all say the same <clears throat> thing. Well, no doctor's going to listen to that but, shit. By the way, my, my wife was having problems with uh, remembering things. And uh, so she went to a doctor, and they gave her a bunch of tests, and they even did an MRI on her brain, and they said you pass with flying colors you're just getting old and that's why you're forgetting stuff and um she said well would i could i sh would that prevagen stuff help me I see that commercial and, and the guy said to her doctor said to her that's like eating cereal 
<laughs> he said, it, it, cereal, it'll taste good, okay? But, you know, forget it. It doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> And yeah. I want to know how jellyfish have a good memory. I don't know if they have a good memory. <laughs> and I don't know. They, they never show up at class reunions, I notice. No, they can't remember when they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so anyway, it's just, you know, I mean, um, um, I, I'll just be glad when the 19 days are over. I just, I just, uh, I'm so tired and worn out. Now, have you, Patrick, have you kind of, because you kind of, Begged out of here a little bit, okay? And so that means you kind of beg out of what? Are you paying attention to all this stuff? Or are Not you... any more than I used to. I mean, I uh, the reason I haven't been on it, I've had a few extra projects that I've yeah. uh, thrown my way. So, yeah. but I mean, I'm paying attention the same as I have. It, none of this gets me overly excited one way or the other. I mean, uh, what's going to be is going to be, and you know, one of the one of the, my great um, what what do I want to call it um, uh, enjoyments, I guess, of the last several days, mm -hmm. and um, surely Charlie had been not a point of it, but he's seen some of my postings. Yeah, um, I think it absolutely wonderful how the Democrats have been rolling themselves into a lather <laughs> over Amy Coney Barrett and the possibility or I guess the inevitability of her becoming a Supreme Court justice. And I think it's great watching them fall over themselves and get all my God, Roe is going to be gone and all of this, because at the same time, I keep reading on Facebook from these many of the same people that Biden is ahead by 14 points. He's going to clean uh, Trump clock. Uh, there's going to be no way Trump gets reelected. So what are you worried about Amy Coney Barrett for? I mean, you know, uh, Joe can pack the court with two or three more judges that are liberal, and then her opinion doesn't matter. Chill out, people. Relax. Uh, uh, Charlie, I'm going to go to you next. I just want to say something to Patrick about that. The only thing that bothered me about those hearings was, why did they hold them anyway? They know how it's going to come out. It's like, you know... Somebody told you how the movie ends, so why go to it? You know, I mean, this, this was just for all these people to get up and posture, you know. I mean, I wish it were a, a, a real hearing in which a, some, people, some minds would be changed or whatever, but we know the, the Republicans are voting for her and the Democrats aren't, and that's the way it is. So why go through all of this? Uh, Charlie? Yeah, the, the, the reason that uh, <clears throat> the Democrats are upset with her is because she's so far right wing. She's she's so far biased. She doesn't. She ignores what the law actually says and does what the Republican Party wants her to do. And she's only 48 years old. So she's going to be there for like four decades. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. They're well, unless she gets a real so job, you know. Uh, yes, uh, John. I, I thought the hearings were pretty valuable because, you know, I mean, like that uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, you know, when when he started talking about where all that, you know, money has come from, you know, to get all these right wing judges on the court. And, and you know, when he started talking about like, you know, like the history in the last, you know, the last five years of how the Republicans have completely you know, stolen the uh, the judiciary system from the Democrats, you know, and they've, you know, th they've packed the courts with, you know, right wingers all the way. I mean, not just the Supreme Court. I mean, all the lower courts and stuff. And, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's going to come back. I think it's going to come back and bite the Republicans big time. Well, it, you know, um, 
uh, again, you you know, if Biden wants to, he can add another two positions to the court and even the yeah, whole thing yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Um, nobody, there's no laws to how many people you have to have on the Supreme Court. Um, but, uh, you know, when when they were arguing about what Biden might do, and they said, "Well, he he wants to pack the court." Well, what have they just done? Yeah, you know, they've yeah. packed the court. That court is so packed that I hope we do add two people just to kind of just even things out. Maybe so there's somebody in there it could be a swing vote. There isn't even a swing vote there. Maybe John Roberts is the closest thing we have to a swing vote. Yes, mm -hmm. Charlie. I, I think they ought to, once the Democrats get in there, they ought to pass a law or even if it's a constitutional amendment that the Senate has to have so, a certain amount of time, like two months, that, that they get to to decide whether or not they want to support the, the nomination that the president makes. And if they don't do anything like McConnell did, he sat on those federal judges for two fucking years, he wouldn't. Uh, yeah, they made a big. They, they made a big. Obama. They made a big deal out of the fact uh, Trump did. Well, Obama didn't appoint judges when he yeah. could have. Well, he yeah. tried to, but oh, uh, yeah. McConnell was. So it ought, was, to, it ought yeah. to. They ought to automatically go in if they don't do anything for two months. That's if you don't say no in two months, then that's a yes. Well, I, that was, that, that and I think that the Supreme Court. Should own, the justices should be able to hold, uh, the suggestion has been hold their position for 18 years. And well, in that 18-year cycle, each president has the ability to appoint two new justices, okay, in that period wow. of time. And, and then that would make it, I think, at least, I mean, we are stuck with Amy Coney Barrett for the next, you know, let's say she, if she lives to be as old as... Uh, um, uh, what's her name? It's uh, RBG. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, mm -hmm. She is going to. She's going to be there for what? Forty yeah. years. Fifty Forty years. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot longer before we we're around. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Patrick. <laughs> one. I, I will say one benefit to the um, to the hearing have been that I've been able to sit with a boner for the last three days watching. <laughs> really? So, you find her hot? Oh, I, I, you know what? Any intellectual woman who has some good luck to them, I'm there. I don't care if they're liberal or conservative, but they got to be sharp. And you got to be good looking, and I'll just sit there at attention. There is, and uh, there is something, there's something about her. And now, you see, here, here's what happens on this program, folks. I want you to realize this, and it's very important for you to understand it. Uh, when we get down to the very bottom of it, we start discussing, like, Amy Coney Barrett and that whole thing based upon whether we do her or not. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is not the correct thing to do in this day and age with the Me Too movement and everything. So watch yourself, Patrick. Uh, but my feeling is there is no way little Alex would enter that thing. Okay? And, and the reason is I find her completely unattractive. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's it, you know she has every reason to be attractive. She's not bad looking. I would imagine after five kids, probably everything goes south when she takes her clothes off. But um, uh, I the the point is that for us guys in this group, all of a sudden it comes down to that. And you're sitting there telling me you're getting a boner watching the hearings, and I find that admirable but i don't agree with you because i find that i couldn't possibly in fact what i would do is if i ran a company that made porn films and i was like having a cast call a casting call for for guys and i wanted to make sure they could get it up under any circumstances i'd put up a picture of amy coney coney, coney barrett and have them jerk off to her and if they could have an have an erection and have an orgasm they got the job <laughs> yeah. That's You're definitely going to get defunded now. What? <laughs> You're definitely going to get defunded. You mean demonetized? Stuff. Demonetized. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Yeah, but I mean, I, it's just amazing that uh, it, it does come down to that with you, doesn't it, Patrick? You know, you want her confirmed because you want to be able mm -hmm. to see her lovely visage for the next 40 years. Well, you never see uh, Supreme Court. You know who's hot is AOC's pretty hot. Oh, oh yeah. AOC, yeah. You don't find any AOC hot, do you, Patrick? No, I mean, there, there's another one. It, 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 the, the politics would, we would have to not talk politics. Just get down to business. <laughs> but AOC. As soon as she yeah. would talk politics, now I, I, I could probably still finish, but, it would, <laughs> you know, it, it, Let's put it this way. We wouldn't go for dessert then or out to dinner. Okay, so you, in other words, you just want the boff and then you're, you're out of there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, AOC is, 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 I think, probably one of the most attractive senator, uh, congresswomen we have in the, uh, in the Senate, uh, in, the, in the Congress, not in the yep, Senate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to tell know, you, I got to tell you, if we're, if we're talking about <laughs> women, I think... Uh, uh, Biden's running mate is uh, pretty hot. Yeah. You know. I like the senator from uh, Arizona. Oh, Kirsten Sinema. Yeah. 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 Is, she, is, she, is she the one that's being going to be voted out now? or No, no, no. no. no that's Sal McSally. Oh, McSally. She's, she's, yeah. one. she's not hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, McSally's oh, up against uh, the astronaut, right? Yeah. 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 She's gone. And she never was elected anyway. She's the one that lost the cinema. Yeah, no. Oh. Arizona's already voted her down once. She got uh, appointed to take McCain. McCain's. When McCain died, yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. So she doesn't even really have the upper hand, so no. to speak. No. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and what's his name? I can't remember. He, and he's got a twin Mark brother. Kelly. It, 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 Mark Kelly. What? Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly is the, is yeah, the and his, he has a brother who's also an astronaut. They're twins. Yeah. They're twin twins. Brother, yeah. Yeah. In fact, didn't both of them go up together on the space station? Oh. Or oh. no, one of them did. One of them did. All right. Uh, but anyway, so uh, so anyway, we, we've had a good political discussion here. It certainly has has evolved. <laughs> very, very intellectual. <laughs> very intellectual. <laughs> um, let me let me ask you this, Patrick. Let's say. You had a really hot woman who was a Democrat running for president. What uh, would you what, would you vote for her based on the fact that she gives you a you know a Woody? I wouldn't I wouldn't vote for her based on that. I mean, I may vote for her based on her political stances. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I wouldn't eliminate her just because she's a Democrat, but I wouldn't vote for her just because of looks. Yeah. Uh, the only one that I would do that for would be Tulsi Gabbard. Really? Yeah, but not for president. Just, you know, it, it, yeah. my idea was I was going to write her in. But I ended up voting <laughs> Libertarian. Okay. Because I could not figure out who would be a good vice president for Tulsi. And you have to write in a president and vice president. And I just figured, well, um, you'd have to put a gun to my head to get me to vote for Biden. Um, I'm not a fan of Trump, so I'll just go libertarian, and, and then that way I haven't given up my right to bitch once the election done. But good, so, good. But let me but, ask you this, though. Who is the libertarian candidate? Uh, Joe, Jor Joe Jorgensen or something. See, like that. see you don't even know. <laughs> It's, it's like when Gary Johnson ran. I mean, yeah. it really didn't matter. By the yeah. way, I, I had Gary Johnson on my show. You may remember. You know. <laughs> Nicest guy. Really a great guy. I I really enjoyed him. Uh, I enjoyed him because he was no nonsense. He answered any question I would ask. I was talking earlier about politicians coming on the show and never answering the question that you ask them. They always look like they're listening to the question, and then they answer another question, one they want to answer. He was very direct. Anything I would ask him, I said, I don't like your politics particularly. He said, but you seem very honest, you know, and he really was. Um, who was the wrestler? Um, 
Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. I like Jesse, uh, but, but he, he was a terrible governor. And I didn't like his politics, but he was straightforward, you know? I could get an answer out of him. Yes, Robert. Gary Johnson was the guy in 2016 who did the town hall, and they asked him a question about Aleppo. And yes. He had no idea what Aleppo was. And yeah. I was so dying to take part and tell him Aleppo was the Marx brother yeah. that didn't appear in any of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always, I, when people said Aleppo, I'd say, "Is that the sixth Marx brother?" Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, there were five Marx brothers. You know that. No, I didn't. Yeah, there's Chico. There was Harpo. Yeah. There was Groucho. Yeah. There was Zeppo. Yeah. And Gummo. then there was Gummo. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And he uh -huh. Gummo left the act before they went to movies. And I think he went out to Hollywood and became a, a major uh, agent. Yeah, he did. As a matter of fact. And then I think Zeppo followed him into the agent business and became the husband of Barbara Marx, mm -hmm. who, when Zeppo died, married Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Hey, yeah. how do I know this stuff, huh? Huh? Well, huh? Let's hear it for Were they real him. brothers? What? <laughs> what did you eat for dinner? Were they all real brothers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Same Oh, yeah, they were all real brothers, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I, you know, of course you can be a little bothered by that because because a lot of times people call themselves brothers in show business and they're really not related, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, the Ramones, the, the Ramones weren't related. There was, there was, uh, there was Joey Ramone. I don't think, and it was uh, Mark, Mark, Marky, Mark but Ramone. It, was it a real brother? No. Yeah, I think they had. Well, there was one real brother in that group, but the rest of them were also. Was, uh, they all had the last name Ramon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I think there were. Uh, uh, jo it was. Oh, it was. It was. It was, it was Joey, Joey and and, the, and I'm to remember. What, I think it might have been Marky. It was the Johnny. 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 Johnny was a real right wing nut. I think yeah, Johnny he Ramon. Is, no. He's the only one still alive, right? No, Johnny's gone. I think so. Are they all I dead? Think the only one alive is the second. Well, I don't know if, if you if you know this, but you remember that during the Beatle era, um, um, Murray the K was known as the fifth Beatle, right? You remember that, Robert? Sure. sure. Well, and this was official from the Ramones. I was the fifth Ramon. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, because uh, uh, and I love Joey. I mean, he was the best. And, uh, and the president of Antifa. You are one. And I'm the president of Antifa. <laughs> By the way, Robert, are you coming to the meeting next week? I'll, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll okay, be good. Be, be sure to bring your, your uh, Uzi with you. I want, oh, want to see no, it. No, no, no. If, it's, if it's, it involves guns, I ain't going. Oh, okay. Oh, well, then you don't have to bring your gun. It's okay. gun. You know. Bring your, we, bring bring your membership we, card. We have, we have to hold some kind of meeting to... Yeah. Fake Trump out and make him actually think this organization he said that exists. Why don't he dis he said why don't he uh why don't they ask him about Antifa? They don't ask about Antifa because Antifa doesn't exist. Antifa is a philosophy which goes back to the eighteen hundreds, okay? Yeah. And yeah. it's not an organization. It is simply being anti fascist. And it was a bunch of people who were anti fascist and then uh, throughout the years, it's been anybody who considers themselves to be anti-fascist. But there is no Antifa. They don't get together and say, well, uh, we better get to Portland right now. There's a riot going on, you know. Yes, uh, John. Did you see what Trump said at, uh, um, I think it was at the rally yesterday when he was talking about that Antifa guy that the cops shot? It, it turned out that the cops didn't even try to... Um, they didn't even they didn't even try to arrest him. They just shot him on the spot. Yeah. And Trump said said yeah. They didn't want to arrest him, so we just took care of him. I mean, <laughs> the president saying that shit. Oh that's, my God. <laughs> that's like just hmm. authorizing murder. You know? got him. Well, I said something earlier, and I was agreeing somewhat with Charlie. I, I just after he described his fight with COVID tonight, I began to think about Charlie saying yeah. I think he was faking it that it, it didn't really exist. And when he talked about it, he didn't talk about it like, did you watch it, Brian? Did you watch him during this mm -hmm. period of time in the, inter, in the interview? 
when he talked yeah, about getting yeah. COVID. Did but you? He never did, went into detail. Did, how did, he, did he appear to you that he actually had COVID? That, like I said, off the balcony, he looked like he was having a hard time breathing. Yeah. But yeah. Then after I that, but then after that, he was on some of the some of the rallies already, and he was going full force. Do you do you come back that fast from COVID? Um, from what I'm told, COVID sometimes okay. keeps lingering for months. Yep. Yeah. You know, high fever. When you're an older yeah. person. Yeah, but he didn't have a high. He said he didn't have a high fever. He said he had a very low fever. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, it just, it. yeah, I just, I somehow I, I just, but then I'm thinking if he did it because he wanted to get some kind of sympathy for the election or yeah. whatever, it didn't work, you know. Work. And then poor <laughs> Melania had it and the kid had it. Okay. Or okay. maybe, maybe did that's a really fake too. I don't know. She... What? Did she have it, or did she just have it as a medication? Or she you could no, she she said she had a bad. She had a she was running a high fever, and that she had you know headaches and uh, you know feeling uh, pain in her, her bodily aches and pains and so on. All the you know all the oh, so normal she, flu stuff, and that her. that uh, that Baron also got it, but he didn't have any effects of it. Because he, she said he's he's young and he's strong and he's active, you know, and and so. wouldn't know it to look at him. <clears throat> Actually, I've, we haven't seen pictures of him lately. We remember oh. the pictures of him when he was smaller. He's mm. kind of a tall teenager now. Yeah, he's tall. Very tall. He's tall. Really yeah. tall. He's real tall. Yeah. So I mean, I kind of believed what she was saying, but it was just listening to him tonight. I said that doesn't sound like somebody with COVID. Yeah, it seems like a really quick, bizarre. You know, recovery. I mean, yeah. I had a friend in the very beginning who had, who thinks he had COVID, and it lasted, lingered for about three weeks. He was running a temperature every day. You know, it didn't get horrible, but he had aches and pains and didn't feel good for two, three weeks. See, this his, guy's, perso- his, huh? his personality of going to the hospital, that's why I don't get, because he's supposed to be a strong guy and, you know, his tough attitude. I, I, that, that's where I had a hard well, time believing, because why would he go to the hospital then? Well, it, it could be his doctors didn't want to take any chances. But the thing we were saying yeah. last night that I wondered about was she didn't go to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah why would they leave the first lady And home? And mm-hmm. somebody supposedly asked the doctors about this, and they said, well, yeah, she's not the president. Yeah. Well, I'm she's sorry. Well, that was you a know. good answer, right? Yeah. That, that's not a good oh, answer. No sense. <laughs> she could die. We could sacrifice her. Yeah. She, well, I mean, uh, if you've looked at Trump's history of marriage, yes, she is disposable. I mean, yeah. think about it. That's like my dad getting sick and my mom, and they're taking my dad out and say, well, man, see you later. Big dad, where you going? Mommy's sick. Well, I got to get treated first. Fuck her. It's almost like it's in, I think I don't buy it. I think Charlie's right. I think. Remember, sign. Hmm? Remember Seinfeld, George Costanza, when he pushed the old lady oh, out yeah, of the way on the house on fire? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, God. why would you leave? Wouldn't you just take her there? Yeah, but I, do you remember what they said to George Costanza when he was uh, in the ambulance? How do oh, you yeah. live with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Based on 2020, I think covid in yeah. two weeks will come out with a tell-all book about the, <laughs> well, you, about the Trump family. i gotta tell you what i'm sick of with the covid uh today i decided i would watch a uh, uh, a webinar with my union about why they've had to get rid of the old medical plan oh. and are going with the new medical plan which is going to cost me about four to five times as much as i'm paying now for this medical plan okay and their excuse was, well, the pr- cost was going up, and the costs were going up because of med- medical costs were going up, and then COVID hit. I'm sick uh-huh. of everybody explaining their incompetence by saying, hey, COVID. Yeah. You know? I mean, wh- what? And then they say, you know, it was a matter of saving the, uh, of saving the union and the medical plan. Uh-huh. And, and I wrote to them, saving the union? What about saving the members of the union? Whom, some of which may die because they can't afford health insurance now. 
And isn't that what that's for? And insurance, that's like insurance saying, oh, well, COVID's hit, so we're not going to cover anybody anymore <laughs> because it's going to cost us money. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I'm tired of what I call the COVID excuse. Oh, we, we haven't been answering the phones fast enough because, you know, COVID. Well, I don't think COVID is preventing you from putting more people at home online to answer the phones for your company. In fact, it may be easier than having them come into work and have to have the real estate for them to sit at in order to do it. But yeah. it's, it's what I call the COVID excuse for everything. Now, oh, we can't do that, you know, COVID. Hmm. Well, yes, you can. COVID's a whole different problem. So anyway, you know, <clears throat> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yes, uh, Jeff. I, you know, I, I'm always a little... Uh, pissed off at uh, Biden talking about unions and he is like he like unions come out of his mouth every once a minute but, 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 but what about unions well I just I just think he always talks about it that he's really going to get a lot of union people who are going to get jobs well and I'm wondering about I don't think there's that many union jobs. Anymore. Well, the, the, it, uh, you know, the trouble is we don't have, and I I'm, 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 imagine Patrick might disagree with me on this, but I don't think we have enough unions anymore. Used to be, this was very much a unionized country. And now yeah. all those jobs which used to be unionized aren't unionized at all. You know, and what the unions did was they actually set the wages for all the people who weren't unions just by their own example and by setting the bar. And, and that's why the unions always got very pissed that people wouldn't join the unions because, hey, you know, you wouldn't be getting what you're getting at your job if we didn't exist. Yeah. So uh, all that has changed in America. When I was growing up as a kid, my father was a member of the Musicians Union, gung-ho about the union. Imagine a guy who plays a fiddle, you know, is gung-ho about the union. Um, and, and I was brought up as a union kid, you know. So when I had a chance to join a union, first the IBEW, the Electrical Workers Union, and then uh, later on uh, the uh, um, after it, uh, I, I looked at that as a badge of having come of age in my business, was being able to join the union and holding a job that I, you know. So I was always big on unions. But I got to tell you, mine is useless. <laughs> you know, it's really useless. And I've often always felt they were useless. But I still, for all these years, have paid my dues every, every quarter. Not so I would get anything out of them because I didn't get anything out of them. I was able to get my own price because I was able to negotiate my own terms with radio stations. Uh, and those radio stations weren't necessarily unionized. But I kept stayed a member of the union out of respect, to, basically, to my father, who was a big union guy. And, uh, and, and so uh, when I have something like this union suddenly abandoning all the seniors, 1,200 seniors, 12,000 seniors, are going to have to find a place to go get insurance and to pay for it. And to do something equal to what we had before uh, will cost each and every one of us at least four to five hundred dollars a month, and that's you know that's uncalled for. I mean, you know, you watch out for your members. That's all I'm saying. So, I've made my uh, my uh, piece here. Anybody? Anybody here belong to a union at one time or another? Mm -hmm. I do. You do? What do you belong to? I did. To? Uh, I, I'm the, it's an usher union or a theater workers union. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. But like... like what's when, the, when what's the logo for the union? A flashlight? No, it's, it's theater workers, you know. It's the same union <clears> that the... <throat> uh, the same union that the stage workers... Oh, you mean in. IATSE? I guess, yeah. My, yeah. yeah, my mother was uh, used to work at the IATSE office in San Francisco and was the secretary there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, they do the ushers and the uh, 
you know, the uh, guys that load the stuff into the theaters, all that crap. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean. Those guys need to have a union. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have negotiating power. So it's. But a, the, the, all the rock, the rock and roll places are non-union, like the Warfield. Mm -hmm. That's non-union. But like the theaters where they do like Broadway stuff. That's union. But you see, that that's what's changed, though. My father, towards the end of his life, became a uh, 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 work for the musicians' union as a, I'm trying to remember what the term was. Uh, but he went out, he was a representative, and he would go out and they'd say, okay, tonight you're going to go to the opera house and you're going to go check and make sure the orchestra is being well taken care of. Uh, and um, so he did, he did that. And... Uh, uh, it, in those days, they actually had a union for all the rock places, like the Matrix and the Fillmore and, um, and so on. They were all unionized. Uh, and he would go out, and what they did with my father, because he was the new guy on the block, they made him be the representative for all the rock venues. <laughs> and so he had to go out and, and deal with the rock venues, and he said he loved it. He just loved what these kids were doing. He said they were really playing some interesting music and so on. And one day there was this one musician who wanted uh, to jo join the union. But in order to join the union in those days, the musicians' union, you had to go sit before a group of other musicians and play your instrument to prove you could play your instrument and read music. Okay. Because, you know, they wanted to say, hey, we, we're sending a guy out to play music at your gig, and he's qualified by the union. And he had this one musician who was a <coughs> guitar player. He said it was just terrific. And he took him down to the musician's union, and they said, okay, well, uh, can you read music? And my father jumped in and said, no, he can't. He never learned how to read music. But why don't you just listen to him play? And he played. And the musicians there said, this kid's terrific. He said, we don't care if he doesn't read music. We'll make him a member of the union. That was Steve Miller. Wow. Wow. And, and uh, when my father died, my mother got a note from Steve Miller saying, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for your husband and how he fought for me with the musicians' union. So, you know, unions have, but unions have changed. Um, and I don't know how many of those musicians today are members of the Musicians' Union. But uh, anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yes, Robert. I, I belong to a union, but we couldn't call it a union. Teachers are not, by law, permitted to be parts of a union. Now, you hear National Education Association, but notice the word association. You can belong to the AFT, which is the American Federation of Teachers, but at no point are we permitted to use the term union? Ah, yeah, that's okay. because by law, we're not allowed to, it was to keep us from the ability to strike. Wow. Hmm. And now, so mind it, you, teachers did strike just the same, but by virtue of calling a strike, they were already um, in violation of law. So is that true today as well? I believe it still is, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I got involved with... Um, police have a union. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Firemen yeah. have a union. You, you got to understand that teachers kind of got hind, um, you know, like the short end of the stick in a lot of cases. And frankly, this is going to sound like it's uh, chauvinistic. But for years and years and years, teaching was a female-dominated profession. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there was little... Um, consideration giving to increasing their pay level and so on and so forth because the general overall feeling was that they weren't making the chief income in a household they weren't the breadwinner exactly yeah and in mm -hmm. a lot of cases with all due respect to my female colleagues yeah. in a lot of cases that was true so they weren't quite as aggressive in many cases about pursuing you know, all that they felt that they were worth. And so as a result, they got off to a bad start um, pay-wise. And now all these years, you know, trying to catch up, it, it, it hasn't worked, frankly. Now, can I tell you something? Uh, the National Education Association mm -hmm. 
uh, I made money from them. What I did, I got a job doing voice work, narrating their slideshow presentations of things like you and your health plan, okay? <laughs> and I would read these pages and pages of you and your health plan for the NEA. And uh, I did about five or ten of these things, if I remember correctly. And then I used to get paid for them. So the that was my... That Huh? I'm sorry. The thing that used to bother us no end was um, there were in my community two job actions. We couldn't call them strikes, but they were strikes. And it was because negotiations had stalled. What would happen invariably is that the principal in your building would give you a hard time about not reporting to work. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, privately, your principal was telling you, get all you can. Because if we got a 5% raise, obviously 5% of a lot more is a lot more. Yeah. Yet they couldn't belong to an association or union of their own. So while they were stepping on our necks about, you know, you've been in violation of the law, they were yeah. secretly hoping we did a good job in negotiations because they benefited from it more than we did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we're not living in an age where unions are that powerful anymore, you know. Mm. I mean, you still got the Teamsters. They still are, I think, pretty well going strong. I would imagine if, um, if Kevin were here, he could tell us about the Teamsters, you know. Uh, but uh, anybody here belong to a union at any time? No, no. Oh, yeah. I did. You, you say you did. Yeah, I asked this question earlier. Yeah, I worked for, um, for uh, Boeing making uh, missile bombs and stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah, at the beginning. Oh, yeah. How to kill Part people. Part of the military-industrial complex, eh? You better believe it. Yeah. And then I worked on the 747. Really? Yep. And how'd you wind up making the parts for the heart? Well, I, I, I kind of got sick of working on this quasi-military. Yeah boring huge facility it was just yeah a factory you know that's yeah cool. yeah and um i ultimately uh, got involved in uh, medical stuff and i was absolutely fascinated by doing that yeah and i said that's what i'm gonna do and you save you saved a lot of lives in the process not bad uh, including your own yeah, yeah. Did they actually use one of your devices in you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a little something I made I mean, down. you got to use your own, right? A little something I made down in the workshop today. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I would even do some custom stuff that people said, you know, nobody has these things. And I'm a surgeon, and, and I know how to do this. But I can't find anybody who's willing to manufacture it. Willing to manufacture it. Wow, right. That, that's so there's a way that you can uh, you can do it outside of the FDA system. Well, there is the uh, current theme song. Uh, and uh, uh, there's been a nice crowd tonight. Some, we've gone everywhere with this discussion. Uh, and look, uh, in the, for the f uh, seventh inning stretch, it's uh, John Larkin uh, going there. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it as always. Same to you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Is she asleep right now? I don't know. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, thank you so much. Love having you here. Tony, always like having you here. Jeff Stein, inventor, scientist, and builder of bombs. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Blazer. Atomic bombs. Thank you, Patrick. Love seeing your shiny countenance here. And John Larkin. Hey, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back, and we can uh, we can say goodbye to each other. Yeah, there they go. That's the uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, listen, uh, it's Jack Bishop next over most of the same gabnet. He'll be taking your calls for a citizen panel using Skype, and the address is gabnet live. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Yeah. I, I imagine I will. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, 
Uh, I'll see you at uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. And now more than ever, please wear a mask. Good night, everybody.